Hey everybody, um, I am so excited. Um, I just made a video about the fact that Elvis is still number one and he has achieved over a hundred million in gross sales at the box office. This is so incredible. It hasn't even been out for two weeks yet. It's only been out for like 10 days and it's already grossed over a hundred million. I think that this movie is going to be so big because I read that it, there's a few countries that it hasn't even come out in yet. So, um, it's going to get so many more people at the theater to see it. It's amazing. I mean, I, you know, whether you like this movie or you don't like this movie, which I, I think for the most part a lot of people like it and there are some inaccuracies and there are some things about it that I even wish would be different and I'm actually going to cover some of that stuff in this video my pros and cons I have more pros for it than I do cons but I wanted to go over some of those things and some of the things that people are bothered by in the movie but regardless this movie is so amazing just for the f pure fact that it shows Elvis in a positive light as far as him as an entertainer and what he meant to the world and his fans and he was just an artist. He was the greatest entertainer of all time and I think that's what this movie conveys. Because it's not, a, it's not a biography, like I said before, it is the story of Elvis and the Colonel and how the Colonel took advantage of him and Elvis's frustrations and what I think it shows m most of all and the most important thing about it is that Elvis didn't need anybody. He didn't need the Colonel. The Colonel may have helped him to get like, you know, to get a push out there. But Elvis didn't need him. He had the talent, he had the charisma, he had everything, and he didn't need him. And I don't know if he realized that or not. I guess he didn't because he kept kept the colonel, you know, all those years. But I think that's what this movie is mainly about and what comes across in it. And it's just fabulous. Austin Butler, just his performance alone makes this movie amazing. He does Elvis such justice and makes him look so great in this movie compared to the other movies that made Elvis like a character of himself and sometimes a joke, let's be honest. But Austin Butler did such an amazing, fabulous job and he just brought class to Elvis in this movie. So to me that's the most important part and the fact that it is doing so well and it's reached so many people is amazing because that's what all of us Elvis fans are excited about is that he's out there again. Elvis is out there again and people are discovering him and the word is out. I've been telling people about this movie. People have been coming to me and asking me if I've seen it because they know I'm a huge fan. I see stuff about him on the internet. I've heard he's like trending on TikTok. Spotify, he's gotten like four million more um, view or um, listeners on Spotify. Um, it's just amazing. He's everywhere, everywhere you look on YouTube, on TikTok, on commercials, in the grocery store, everywhere you go, you see Elvis. I mean, in the grocery store, you see magazines because it's been a long time since I've seen Elvis magazine, so that's really cool to see. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to, to put that out there and see how excited I am about that. But I'm going to go over some of the things that I um, wish would have been different in the movie. I understand that it's only a two and a half hour movie and it's hard to encompass somebody's life, especially somebody as enormous as Elvis, into two and a half hours. So I understand the reason why Baz did a lot of the things he did. Things are out of place, things are not 
didn't happen in the right year and stuff in the movie. And, and to me, that's not a big deal as long as he conveys what happened and, you know, the basic idea of it. But one of the things that I wish that he would have, um, put in there a little more is Elvis's gospel influence. And I know that he touched on it, of course, in the movie, but I feel like gospel was such a big part of his, his life and his music. And, uh, he loved all types of gospel. He loved black gospel. He loved the white court quartets, like the Statesmen and the uh, Blackwood brothers. He had such an enormous influence of gospel music and he loved it, it was his first love. And I wish, and he was a very spiritual man too. And I wish that they would have, or he would have conveyed that a little more in this movie. Because even though he touches on it, I feel like it could have been a little more. Like, I feel like maybe they could have uh, showed him recording How Great Thou Art, the album. Because that was a great success for him because it was his first Grammy. Um, and even showing him singing How Great Thou Art. Um, there is, he has said that there is a four hour cut that he has, so hopefully he will release that and maybe there are other scenes that he filmed that we'll get to see. Another thing that, um, kind of bothers me about the movie a little bit, but I do understand it, is that in a lot of Elvis movies, um, they tend to, uh, make it seem like after 1973 Elvis gave up on life and his life was just over with after that and his career was just over and we all as Elvis fans know that that's not true because even though it w the divorce with Priscilla was hard for him and he was saddened by that he still fell in love with again obviously he was with Linda and then he was with Ginger and he had happy times again because if you read those book, their books, you see that and, and you read that in their books. Um, you know, he went on vacations. He had great times with family, with his daughter. He even achieved other things after 1973. A lot of people think that after the Aloha, that was it. But that wasn't it. He, he won another Grammy for his performance at the Mid-South Coliseum when he performed in Memphis. And that was a big accomplishment and the big New Year's Eve show that he did and I mean he he still had a lot to look forward to when he did was looking forward to a lot so his life did not end in 1973 and I wish that that he would have put a little more of those joyful times in this movie because even though I understand that um He's trying to convey his frustrations over what the colonel was doing to him in his career in this movie. I wish that he would have conveyed some of his happy times too because, um, you know, I, I hate that people want to portray him like he was very unhappy and sad and depressed because I don't think he was. I think there might have been times he was, but I don't think he was. Um, but like I said, I understand because of the way the movie is it's it's from the colonel's point of view and you know the colonel is telling his story how he sees it and um it's understandable that in this movie he's going to be frustrated and mad a lot because of the things that the colonel is doing to him and then like i'm going to go over some um things that i've heard other people talk about that they don't like um, for one thing, Gladys, <clears throat> a lot of people are saying how they do not like the way that Gladys is portrayed in this movie. And I get that because she's, she's portrayed as like, first of all, she's, she, it's shown that she, she's drinking a lot in this movie. And there are some people that say that she did drink and some people that say that she didn't drink. So I guess we don't know the total truth about that. Um, but she's also comes across as very fiery and angry in this movie a lot and losing her temper. And um, I actually understand that because I believe that she did not trust the colonel. And she was 
excuse me, my cat just jumped up here. You want to look, you want to meet my cat? Here's my cat, Spooky. Say hi, Spooky. Hi. <laughs> so anyway, um, she, I think that she just did not trust the Colonel and she was mad and she was worried about Elvis and what was happening with him and his career and what the Colonel was doing. And so I think that's what Baz was trying to get across in the movie. And also, I believe that um, she had a temper, just like Elvis had a temper. And I think that's where Elvis got his temper, is from his mother. And so um, I think that's, I think that's actually true to life in the movie because I've actually like read that in books that she had a temper and I've heard people like Lamar Fike and other people say who were around at that time and around Gladys say that she saw like Elvis and her and Vernon get into arguments and things and lose their temper so I don't think that's totally untrue and um I actually you know, I kind of like the fact that she was fiery and she was sticking up for her son in the movie. Um, another thing is the scene where Elvis fires the colonel on stage. Everybody's mad because they say that that didn't happen that way. And yes, we know that's true. We do, however, know that um, Elvis did fire the colonel in 1973. And he. we also know that... Well, if you're a fan, if you're a big fan like me, you know that Elvis had a couple of rants on stage in Vegas about the the international and about other things on stage, and it's on tape. And I think that what Baz was doing was he was just trying to combine the rants that Elvis had on stage with him firing the colonel. And I think that the way he did it was genius. And that is like my favorite scene in the movie. I love that scene. Austin Butler is amazing in that scene. And just for that performance alone, he deserves an Oscar. I just love that. that is my favorite scene in the whole movie. And I know a lot of people don't like that. But like I said, I think that what Baz was doing was combining his rants on stage with firing the colonel. So, um... I'm going to play a little bit of that rant, one of those rants for you so that you can hear it. And then I'll come back and talk a little more. So here's that rant right now. Well, I was, you know, in this day and time, you can't even get sick. You are strung out. Oh, by God, I'll tell you something, friend. I have never been strung out in my life, except on music. <laughs> when I got sick here in the hotel, I got sick here that one night, I had 102 temperature, they wouldn't let me perform. From three different sources I heard, I was strung out on heroin. I swear to God, hotel employees, Jack, bellboys, freaks that carry your luggage up to the room, people working around, you know, talking, maids. And I was sick, I was, you know, I was getting, had a doctor, had the flu, and I didn't get over one day, was I? But all across this town, I was strung out. So I told him earlier, and don't you get offended, ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking to somebody else. If I find or hear the individual that has said that about me, I'm going to break your goddamn neck, you son of a bitch. <laughs> that is dangerous. That is damaging to myself, to my little daughter, to my father. To my friends, my doctor, to everybody, my relationship with you, my relationship with up here on the stage, it is dangerous. I will pull your goddamn tongue out by the roots. Thank you very much. Anyway, how many of you people saw the movie Blue Hawaii? So that was the rant that um, Elvis had on stage. I think it was in 1974. Um, at the International. It skews the, some of the bad language in it, but, um, and it's kind of hard to listen to, but, um, yeah, I think that what Baz was doing was he sh was trying to combine the rant that Elvis had on stage with firing the colonel, and like I said, 
I think that that scene is genius and I love it. It's my favorite scene in the movie. Um, another thing that I wish that he would have conveyed and um, put a little more in the movie would be about some of the Memphis Mafia. I, I kind of feel like he portrayed some of them as like not so positive and um, he put one of the members up in front and kind of made it seem like he was in charge of everything and he was the one that was um, giving Elvis all the advice and everything and that of course is Jerry Schilling and not that I don't like Jerry because I do I've met him a few times he's a nice guy and I understand that Baz uh, consulted with him as well as Priscilla to do this movie so it makes sense that he would put him in a lot of the scenes but I just wish that they would he would have included some of the other um, members like Red because Red was so close to Elvis and um, you know uh, Sonny and Joe and um, even though they show Charlie in it I feel like they make Charlie seem a little goofy in it because he just says let's have fun you know in it and he's kind of goofy in it but um, I just wish that he would have put a little more of the Memphis Mafia in it because regardless of what anybody thinks whether you like them or you don't or you agree with them or you don't um, they were still part of Elvis's life and he loved them at one time and he had them in his life for a reason so I just feel like they played some important uh, parts in his life so that's one of the things I wish that he would have put in there too but I mean for the most part um, you know it's a great movie and yes there are inaccuracies in it because no movie is ever going to be perfect especially um, a biopic as they're calling this and uh, you know it's it's not going to be perfect I mean I, I love the Kurt Russell movie I've always loved the Kurt Russell movie but if you go back and watch that that movie is way inaccurate it's so inaccurate um, there are so many things that happen in that movie that are not not right like for instance the girl that he falls in love with at the beginning her name is Bonnie and I never remembered him falling in love with a Bonnie <clears throat> it was uh, Dixie who he fell in love with and was his first girlfriend and then there you know the part where he I don't know if you guys have seen the Elvis Kurt Russell movie but if you have then you know what I'm talking about the part when his mom dies and he goes to the hospital and is by her bed he wasn't at the hospital when his mom died so there's a lot of inaccuracies in that movie too and we've always just accepted that movie and said that we like it so I mean you know just go to this movie and watch it with an open mind and don't let these little bitty things um, irritate you and get you upset just watch it for what it is and enjoy it for what it is because the cinematography in it the acting in it Austin Butler it, I can't stress to you how awesome he is in this movie I mean I have seen Elvis impersonators all my life and I'm not the biggest fan of Elvis impersonators but there are a few that I enjoy like Dean Z and Cody Slaughter and Sean Clush who are really awesome and they get Elvis down really good and the thing that, that's awesome about it is that they ha had to like study all of their life to get Elvis to a T this guy only had three years to study Elvis and to get his moves down and his mannerisms down and he does it to a T I mean the guy just I can't I can't brag on him enough and if he does not at least get the nomination I know I've said this so many times but if he does not at least get the nomination there is so something wrong because he so deserves it um, but if you haven't gone to see the movie go see the movie give it a chance um, watch it with an open mind see it more than once if you have to and go out there and see it and support Elvis because this movie is going to get him out there again it already is it's going to get people to be interested in him again. He's all over the place right now, guys. And this is such an exciting time for us Elvis fans. It's so awesome to see Elvis at number one again. And, like, a big, huge 
movie production about him. So give it a chance. Go see it. It's an amazing movie. I promise you that you will not be sorry you want to see this movie. And um, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. I appreciate all my subscribers. I'm over 700 subscribers now, which is insane to me. So thank you. If you like my videos, feel free to give it a like and subscribe if you would like. It would be appreciated. It would be awesome if I could get to a thousand. That's my goal. So um, again, I appreciate you all and leave me some comments down below what you guys think of the movie and and how excited you are that it's doing so well. So until the next time I see you guys in the next video, see you later.